Talk a bit quieter. Got enough to it. There's only a few of us, so that means and the best of us are here tonight, the intelligent ones. So we ought to be able to go through this pretty quick. Really, it will be some review, some overlap. It, repetition is the key to learning. One of the John Milton Gregory's, John Milton's what I know him by, wrote something called the Seven Laws of Teaching. And one of the laws were um, you have to take the learner from the known to the unknown. So that means um, uh, you have to start where they are to take them where they don't know. For example, I took, I uh, went to uh, Kirsten's. I go there, the Schultz's every Wednesday that we can make it work. We do mostly. And we play different games, a game called Phase 10, a game called Life, a game called Battleship, a game called Scrabble. Um, she, she beat me in Scrabble. She beat me in Battleship. She beat me in Life. Okay, well, today she walked into my trap and she asked me because I brought this up. She didn't know how to play. I said, um, she never played one game in her life. I said, I asked her a long time, do you know how to play chess? She said, no. So today she texted me, Drew. She said, are you up for chess today? You want to play chess? I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I went and I taught her. And part of going from the known to the unknown is when you, the game of chess, I mean, I didn't know this until I guess I figured it out. I know when it was in, when it was begun and invented and, and and it grew. It really hasn't grown or changed since it first began. It was made back in the time when there were kings and castles and France against England and Spain against whoever. And that's why you have you have a king and a queen and a bishop and you have knights and you have rooks, which are the castle pawns or the foot soldiers. So the whole idea is, it's about if you can see it in your mind, like King Arthur or something then you can understand what is this game about? What, what does it mean to checkmate their king? And when you checkmate the king, that means the king is trapped. He cannot move. He cannot evade. Nobody can block. You can, he cannot kill. I mean, you can have all your other pieces on the board, but if, you're, you, if your king is checkmate, a landlock, so locked in, that's it, checkmate. Mate is when you get the king in a position where you force him off his spot. He has to move away. And then, you know, maybe one move, he moves one, then you can pursue or not, whatever. whatever. The mentality is, and I told her this, t teaching her, and she understood it. You know, when you teach the game, and I started it out on half the board, and I said, okay, you got, watch, you have a mirror image. You have four pawns, and then you have a rook, a knight, which is the horsey, a bishop, and then your queen or your king, and then parallel on the other side, then you have eight pawns in the front. But as we, as I told her about each piece, I said, now this is how the piece can move. This is what it can do. This is, and I, and there's all kinds of different moves in chat, not moves, but what the pieces can do. They're under a certain way. So she began to understand it. She made a couple of mistakes, and this is the truth. And I told her, and I, and I, and I don't, I mean, I might let some four-year-old beat me, but I'm not letting a 16-year-old beat me. The first game she ever played in her life, she won. I made a couple of crucial mistakes at the end. I really thought I had her and I was helping her. I was kind of playing against myself, but she picked up on it quickly. And I, man, I thought I had her a couple of times. I did have her a couple of times. Um, but she evaded, and, and I made some mistakes. She took my queen, she took a bishop, bang, bang, two, three moves. It was like, oh, man. And so I just tipped my king over and said, that's it. I was playing with pawns, and she still had power pieces. But I told her, it's war. So I said, you want to attack. You want to you wanna get on my side. Your point of this game is to come get me. I want you to come get me. I'm going to get you. I'm going to cut you. Know, it's like, and you want to get me. That's the, way, that's the way it works. And... She, she began to develop that, um, and it's the way I play, it's the way I live, really. Offensive strategy. You say, yeah, you're a pretty offensive preacher. Um, an offense, go after it. Don't, don't wait for, the, for it to come to you. You go to it. Don't wait for danger to come to your door. You go get it. Don't wait for the other army to come to your castle. You go get them before they can get you. That's what chess is all about. It's an awesome game, tremendous game. But there are seven laws. I don't, I, I don't know them all. Um, but um, in fact, I was talking trash when I first, because I took John Milton's law, Seven Laws of Teaching there to the house and was explained to her, every one of these laws here will be used in this game. And the very first law is the, the teacher must know 
the information or the knowledge or the truth that they're going to teach to the learner. So I told her, I'm like, okay, okay. If I have to know the game, I'm definitely knowing. The guy was talking trash from Jump Street, talking. And she ended up winning. I'm thrilled about it, to be honest. It'll live my game. But I had to keep these laws. I taught them to her, and then we used them as the game was going on. I was teaching her stuff, and she said, oh, yeah, that's that law. That's that law. Like the learner must attend upon the truths that are being taught. So when the person sits in the back and they sleep through church, I'm not talking about they worked all the time, but they're, they're just ignoring it. Uh, they just sit there and pass notes and they don't, and whatever, Google, look at their phone the whole time. They're not learning anything. Their, their rear end may be on a seat. They may be here in body, but they're not here mentally or spiritually. They're not making the effort to learn. So the learner, so the, one of the laws of teaching is the learner must want to learn. Here's another one. Never give to the learner that which they can learn for themselves. That's why it's important. This is not church on Sunday morning or Sunday night. It's a Bible study where we take these scriptures with all these truths. I never have really given you a thorough idea of what I was looking for in the original very first week when I said uh, gave out those, um, I don't think I have them now, how to change your spirit. Well, I want you to go to Proverbs. I had like 20 of them, not 20 of the papers, but like 20 verses. Uh, go to the book of Proverbs and find the word spirit. And everywhere it says something about spirit, it'll tell you um, a boisterous spirit, um, not guilty, repulsive, an angry spirit, a depressed spirit, um, a um, deceitful spirit. And it's talking about you, it's talking about the human, the person. This person has a haughty spirit. There's all these different types of spirits, the Bible says, uh, whoso, um, what's that, Proverbs 16, 32. Exactly like Proverbs 25, 28. It's in my notes. I can't he that keepeth his spirit or something like that is better than the mighty and he that... I can't. Can anybody find it? Uh, 16, 32 and 25, 28 say the same thing about the spirit. Yeah. So that I mean, control yourself. Control of your spirit. Um, control of your mind, control of your thought, control of your tongue. Um, um, uh, better than my, and he that ruleth, or like a ruler, determines the direction, doesn't let him be, rules his spirit, then he can take the city. So we admire, you know, the George Patton and the, the Doug MacArthur's and the great uh, Fort Cox and, and whatnot, Westmoreland, um, of our, our generals and our, and our leadership in the military, but the, the greater than these, is the one that can control their spirit. And there's so much in there about changing your spirit. So um, I want you to get those papers if you don't have them, and I want you to go through the book of Proverbs looking for, and those aren't just 12 abstracts. There's a reason for each one. All right, now we need to pray, and we're gonna go from the known to the unknown. You gotta learn some things for yourself. You gotta get excited about the truth, and I'll, I'll try and teach uh, the best I can. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for this evening. We pray for those uh, like Miss White, who is um, not well, and uh, we pray that you'd uh, bless her and help her feel better, keep Brother Jake safe while he's out on the road. Uh, bless Miss Sarah. She works with the youngsters downstairs. And bless each of us that are here. Help us get something from the Word of God tonight. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, I got a couple things to give away. I guess I'll give away later. Here's something for Miss uh, Crystal and something for Mrs. White. Okay, we'll wait on Sunday for Miss White. Miss Crystal, you're going to let us about Okay, now, let me put this in there while we have a blue. I don't want to wipe it off. I don't want to catch it on my fingers and knock it off. Okay, now don't worry about it. I uh, really don't worry about the top. And let's open them to Mark chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mark chapter 5. Matthew, Mark. 
Mark 5. We read this once in a hurry. We'll read it now, not in a hurry. We'll read through verse... Uh, oh, I had a good report. J.P. Landing, I spoke to him about a half hour. I was going to tell you about that this Sunday, so I'll let it wait. Uh, let's take our time, get prepared. I have some glasses somewhere. Okay. Um... Matthew 5, verse number 1. And they came over uh, unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with a, uh, I circled this in my Bible, <laughs> unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Now, just look up here real quickly. When you read your Bible... Uh, Joe Van Buren started a, a book group, a book club. We talked about it for a long time. And, I, and he had some things about books. I can't even get started because on books I could write page after page after page about what books mean to me, the authors I like, the types of stuff. I, could, I started today and was like, I had to stop. <coughs> I love books. Everybody knows that. Books for birthday, books for Christmas, birth, books for gifts. I have, a, I have bookcases full of books there in my house at home. They're piled up. Sometimes I even read in the bathroom. I have books everywhere, okay? I, I, I read books when I eat. I, I, you know, I read books on my way to sleep. I, I like books because part of what books, a big thing books do is they let you travel. In your mind, I, I've never been to Auschwitz. I've never been to Dachau, Bergen-Belsen, others like that. Uh, but, I, but of course, I've seen images on TV. But in my mind, I can't, I can't, I can't um, imagine the stink, the smell. I've smelled a little bit of burning flesh before. I've been in a house of fire where we had to escape uh, with a fire truck, fireman, the whole nine yards. Um, somebody burned our garage out there that Thanksgiving years ago. That was a big fire. But I've never been burned bad or in a fire. And so in my mind, as I just read about this, this one thing off the top of my head, I try and go there, travel there, be part of that. I wouldn't have lasted. I would have fought back. I would have got shot. I would have been killed, murdered. Obviously, I would not have been a pacifist because I couldn't have taken it mentally. And I don't mean like when they're rounding you up. I mean like when you're there and you're starving. I would have said, I give up. I'm charging me some stinking SS dude. I'm ripping his throat out with my teeth and they can stab me. I don't care. I'm checking out today. And that's the way I would have been. I know me pretty well. That's what I would do. Um, I don't have the mental strength or toughness. Think about this. Those people were lost. I mean, Jews were law. They're not saved. They don't believe Jesus Christ is coming. They don't believe in the New Testament. Um, why, why'd they hang on? Some tough boys, huh? Tough women, huh? Start it. How many of you have seen pictures? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. That's just one place. I've never been to Hawaii. Don't, I haven't, you know, I don't serve. I've been chased by women my whole life, so I don't want to go. My mom with a rolling pin, my grandma with a coat hanger, my big sister throwing stuff at me. But um, uh, I don't care about surfing. I don't care about the beach out there, Waikiki and helicopter trips and all that stuff. But I would like to see the USS Arizona. I would like to see that. Um, you know that that's been capped. It's a tomb for, I want to say, 1100, over 1,100 soldiers or sailors, rather, still there today. Now, I don't know if the fishies ate their bodies or something, but... Areas that are sealed off, and a lot of warships have automatic doors. Um, when you seal it, I don't know if they had them back in 41, but when, well, I'm sure they did, they had them in the submarines. When a certain amount of water and ballast, and there's all these different variables, but doors would just automatically seal, not mechanically, but hydro they would just seal. And if you're trapped, I mean, you're trapped with 15 of your buddies, and the door shuts, or water cascades in, and you can't get it open, Okay, you're checking. Now, if you are, number one, you're in salt water. Number two, there's no fish in there. I, I don't think the bodies would deteriorate that much. Anybody got anything to think about that? Anybody know something I don't know? I would think they'd be preserved. 
I don't know if there's like organisms in there and the body, the body decays and you know how the body goes to dust and eats up the flesh and what you look like after you've been dead a month, of course, I don't know, but you follow what I'm saying. So that, I really don't know that. But it stands a reason there's bodies floating around in it right now. Just floating. Bunches of them. But they've been dead 70 some years. Wherever they are, they are forever. To me, that's spooky. I was reading about a head on crash, a drunk driver just happened to be an illegal, just happened to be, but driving drunk and slammed into a, a mom and her sister and three or four of the kids, both had kids, killed, every, killed them all. Now, here you are driving along. Here's Crystal and Hillary. Here's Drew and Alicia. Here's Alicia and Sarah, a couple of friends. They're going somewhere. They got some kids in the back. They've been in the zoo. They've been in the park. They've been in school. They've been whatever. Oh, what are you making for dinner? And all of a sudden, boom, that's it. Gone. Boom, gone. Whoa, you didn't even have time to say, hold on. Gone. To me, that freaks me out a little bit. Does it freak anybody else out? So when I read my Bible, there are things in the Bible. You see wonderful things in the Bible. I see this is the deer that Jesus loves me. You know, there's a lot of other stuff in the Bible that's not so wonderful. And you want to try and envision it or see it. And when you can see those things, you can make Bible stories and Bible people, characters, come to life to where you can understand you can understand a little bit more of what they're thinking, what they're doing. Why would they think that? Or here's another thing I like to do, put myself in that place. I like to have been there. I like, I like to be there at Mark chapter 5. I'd be wearing whatever they were wearing. I mean, I'm not going to get into all that right now, but what you'd be wearing. But, but um, I'd want to be there. I'd want to be part of the town. I'd want to hear the, the, everybody running around. Did you hear about... Drew, did you hear about Kevin? You hear about Doug? Yeah, they're the maniac. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? Imagine all the hubbub and furor and excitement that would follow this story. Now, why did I stop at verse three? Well, look at verse three again. Who had a dwelling among the tombs? This dude lived in the graveyard. Get that. And no man could bind him, no, not with twine. No, not with rubber bands. Chains, man. They chained this dude, and he broke the chains. That's some powerful demonic power. Verse 4, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, uh, and the chains had uh, been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he, Jesus, said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean, get it again, spirit. And he asked him, Jesus asked this unclean spirit, or asked this man, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now, I have never that I know of, maybe one time, heard what I thought could have been a demon talking to me through a human's body. It was up on Bus Route 110 in Chicago. Uh, some guy, 15, 16, I don't know how old he was, but he's walking down the street. I'd never seen him before. And I, I, it was on Buffalo Street. I can't remember if I was with Smith or Gallion or who I was with, but I was with somebody. And I, I asked him to stop, try to talk to him, and he hissed at me. His eyes looked red. You know, he hissed at me. And then he, you know, he made a sign of like an up, down, upside down cross, and he said, I'll see you in hell. And like, of course, wrong thing to say to me, especially back in my 20s on my bus route. I was like, first of all, I'll stomp you in the pudding, boy. First of all, I'll chase you out. And that's why I, that doesn't show the love of Christ. Sorry. Sorry. Not trying to. Not going to say, oh, son, please listen to me and hear about Jesus. Not that. When I say something and they return, it's not that I'm angry at their words toward me, because I don't feel threatened or confronted, or I say to myself, you're not going to run me off my, you won't run me off my plot. You're the wrong, I'm the right, you're bad, I'm good, I'm a Jesus, you're with the devil, or whatever, and so I will chase you. You're going to think you're going to chase me off this bus route? 
I will, and I turn around, start walking toward him, saying, I want to talk to you. Come here, Doug. Ah, oh, six, 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 and Satan rules. I'm like, okay, pal. And I've had that, you've heard that before. There's sometimes people say that in an attempt to like scare you. I'm not going to be with Lord. Hey, hello, my name's Doug Jackson from Three Roots Baptist Church, just out talking to folks in your neighborhood and uh, invite people to church today. And I, I believe in the devil. I believe in the devil. I tell you what, no, you don't. I told you to shut up, fool. He said, well, that's not very good. You wouldn't have a good bedside manner. I have a pretty good bedside manner, but I know a fool when I'm talking one. Hello. Of course, the Bible says, go from the presence of a foolish man without perceiving the words of knowledge, the words of knowledge. My thing is, don't go from his presence. Get in a good argument. Win, baby. I mean, I have, I've had to really dial myself back a lot. Because that's the way I used to. Anybody that was against Christ, I was against them if I couldn't win them. So I don't think, other than that one time, years and years ago, and if there were more times, my, my mind, I think, would remind me. That's the only time I can remember, possibly. Now, this guy here, everybody in town knew he was demon-possessed. Demon he tells Jesus, when Jesus says, what's your name, verse 9, he answers, said, my name is Legion for many. Now, I don't know if they talk, if demons talk like they do on TV, like, my name is Legion. You know, how, you know what I'm talking about? Did I do a pretty good imitation there? That wasn't too bad. I got that from uh, Miss Hillary. told me how to talk like the devil. So, um, but um, uh, I don't know how they talk. I don't know. They, they, they probably did. They probably sounded pretty, pretty scary. And Jesus, uh, and he, the demon-possessed man, besought him, saying, uh, asking, uh, pleading, what's it say? And besought him much that he would not send them, many demons, uh, way out of the country. Uh, now there were there nigh under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Now get it, he went from my name, singular, legion, many, uh, verse 10, them, they besought him. Uh, then verse 12, it really comes out. All the devils besought him, saying, send us unto the swine that we, again, the plurality, may enter into them. Now this is, I'm spending too much time on this text. But um, since there were many voices, many demons, did they all come out in different voices? It might sound like, and this is, Brother Jake's been hammering this enough, but it might sound like you're at church at a charismatic meeting, wouldn't it? All these different voices, you really can't understand, I mean, Jesus could, discern what's being said if there's a hundred voices crying out at once, loudly, beseeching him in different ways. Um, have, uh, one saying, oh, God, please don't, or oh, Jesus, please don't. Another one saying, um, if you do, I'll get your grandma. Or well, I, who knows? That's a dumb thing to say. I'll get after your family. I don't know what they were saying, but they were all saying something vehemently, angrily, ferociously, uh, voraciously, voraciously. I'm going to get my teeth working here. Vociferously. You like that word? It's a 50 cent word, means a lot. Um, that, who knows? There's a bunch of voices going on. Okay, did Jesus get all nervous or did he keep his calm? Uh, verse, uh, that we may enter into them. Go, let us send us into the swine. Verse 13. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd went violently down a steep place under the sea. They were choked about 2,000, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told them the city, yada, yada, verse 15. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed, and in his, this is where I want you to get, his right mind, his right mind. So that tells us then, of course, and I think we touched on this, there's a right mind and there's a wrong mind, right? You heard that before? Like there's a right brain and a left brain, like men use the right brain, women use the left brain, so that'd be right, right, left, wrong. Did that come out right? That came out wrong. Um, but, but in our right mind, now, how do we know what is right? Well, let's see. There's Philippians 4.8. There's 2 Corinthians 10.5. By the way, I, this uh, I bring into every thought the captivity of Christ. It doesn't mean every thought. Addie and I were talking about this. I, I don't know for sure. We probably will. Run around heaven right now, whatever they're doing, talking about you know only the Bible, only Jesus, only stuff like that. 
But I, my father, I was in the Navy, 20 year Navy guy. I was in the Navy. We never hardly talked about the military. Never hardly talked about the Navy at all. Yet he loved the Navy. I loved the Navy. I liked the Navy. He loved the Navy, 20 years. We never discussed it. I, I think he was on a ship called the Racine, the USS Racine. He was a signalman. Um, 20 years, I don't know much else about it, San Diego. I'd like to get to heaven and talk to him about it. I'd like to get to heaven and talk to my dad about a lot of stuff and not like, Daddy, why'd you run away and leave us when we were little? No, it would be Dad, when'd you get saved? And how come this? And how come that? And I like to talk to my mom, man. She was a rock and kept us together. And you know, the older I get, everybody's heard my testimony, dysfunctional family, all that stuff. I realize now, I have been for a long time, but I realize my mom and dad were just absolutely working, trying to keep a roof over our head, food on the table, and clothes on our back. There wasn't time for football practice. There wasn't time to sit down three meals a day and give me vitamins and feed me nutritiously and make sure I brush and floss every night. And I ran the streets, man. I was just, you no, know, my mom was, my dad was gone. My mom worked all the time, um, two jobs. And I just, I got out of school, man. It was it from 2.30 until I came home about 10, 10.30 on the east side of Indianapolis. And I'd started out on in that area with a paper route. And my paper route was, was big. I wanted, same way then, uh, whenever some new something would come over, a little route would open up. I'd try and gobble it up and incorporate. I'd live for papers three, four hours every Sunday, every morning. Get up three o'clock, walk to the paper station, and I knew those streets. I knew the alleys. I knew where dogs were. I I knew. And so when when there was no um, hindrances, man, I just as we say ran the streets. Um, I did a lot of things I shouldn't do. I was thinking about this the other day. You know, some people take one hit of acid. No, it, it, don't ever take acid. LSD. I would take four, five, six, it's called dropping acid, taking a hit is a dose. And I would, uh, purple haze, um, um, orange sunshine, Mr. Natural, purple microdot, there's these different kinds of acid. It was big back then, LSD. Um, and I was always an overkill guy. I always did further. Not because I was better, this is something in me, man. I don't know what it is that just goes Sometimes I go too far. Like Mr. Jackson brings home these great big bags of, cause of eating chocolate, M&M, and, and uh, M&M with uh, peanut butter. I mean, I'm talking like parties. They start out with these little bags. Man, get out of here with that. That's gone. <sighs> okay, got more? No. I said, get bigger bags. So she comes over with a bigger bag, like the man's side. No, that ain't working. So this truth. So she finally brought home the party size. <laughs> so I emptied out this big old milk gallon thing, dried it out and dumped it all, thunder them all in there, shake them all up. Cause the m and small are lighter and they go down to the bottom. So you get the peanut on top and you gotta chew them up and goo them up the right way. You gotta get the chocolate melting and the peanut butter melting and you just sit there and it's like your mouth's having a party. So she brings all these home and I get these mason jars and I fill the mason jar, and that's going to be my allotment for the week. <laughs> and I go crazy. I can't stop myself. I woke up this morning, coffee and chocolate. Before I came to church tonight, I had hot tea and chocolate. When I go home tonight, I'm going to have some leftover chicken rice with a little bit and chocolate. I can't stop myself. Anybody else got these kind of problems with it? All right. Well, well, so, so you know, an impulse to go too far and, and drug and crime and stove and all its dumb things I did. But then on the flip side, when I got saved, I started reading the Bible every day. I started going to church all the time. I started trying to be obedient, 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 obedient. And I became like real, um, uh, I mean, I came to the altar every single service. I never missed everything. Because I, it was not because I was super spiritual or loved God all that much, or I mean, I did, or I was real faithful. It's just, it's part of my, um, my personality, my mind, my drive, my nature uh, to go all in and go all out. And it, it um, uh, all comes from the mind. And I try to get in the right mind. Now, how do you get in the right mind? A certain man thinks he becomes. All right, I'm going to give all these things. We're going to give you that next week. The quality of our quality of our life 
is determined by the quality of our thought. Um, whatever you tell your mind, it believes. Did you know that? You can convince your mind. Whatever you tell your mind, it believes. Like, I don't even hate to admit these things. Man, I, I am like a theory cat with like mice, things that go fast, weird stuff. I mean, I, snakes. I'd rather, I mean, I'd rather face a drum and shepherd, I think, than a mouse sometimes. It's because I didn't get freaked out and think it startled me. It's like a kind of a girly thing to do, you know, but. Um, so I'm standing out in the front yard the other day, I'm looking at that brick on the sidewalk, and I'm talking. And I'm measuring, because I'm going to kind of figure out what it's going to cost me to get, you know, flags to replace it. So I'm walking off, walking off. So I'm standing there looking out to the front uh, fence, how many steps I'm kind of figuring out. And all of a sudden, the flag. Of my <laughs> and I mean, I was like, ooh! I didn't know why I saw that. I mean, I, I thought my knees were bad, man. Uh, and I thought to myself, sometimes they'll like twist and like breathe and move. Careful, you know. Um, but when I moved, I thought, man, what if I had tore my ACL again? I'd be laying in the front yard. Well, how do you hurt your knee? A flag scares me. <laughs> I got to admit that, man. It just, but now, now, would that be a person in there right? My, was I thinking plainly, clearly, correctly? No. The flag. And I didn't know what it was. A bird, a demon. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. But it, but, so I realized right away, that's not in your right mind. Your right mind tells you the right thing where your, the mind, whatever your mind tells you, whatever your mind tells you, no, I got it wrong. Whatever you tell your mind, it believes. Um, whether or not you think you've ever said it, whether or not you think you can, you're right. Um, our mental at Hayden, she don't like it. We can say it right. She don't like it. Ira, she loves it. Kirsten, Nye. She won't let us. She walked over to Ira and she walked by me and like, Who are you? Cindy Roberts? Whatever you know what I'm talking about? Who, who are you anyway? You know, just walk right around like, Yeah, I'm old, but talk to me. Well, so that means I got a winner now, and I've been working on it. So last Sunday, you, you guys came in. I think you just dunk your kids off the bottom of the stairs and go on your way. You can no, But you were in here and uh, Emma was kind of whining, crying. No, my mommy. And Hayden just stepped out of the breach and, and, and handled it all and right away. You know, I saw, I saw that. So I saw it. So I said, you know, it's okay. Big sickness here. Pat and head. And Hayden um, got her in and Emmett sort of heard the. Um, saw the attention that Emma was getting her, saw Emma was crying, kind of crying, <coughs> he was doing the same thing. Um, they both totally chilled, chilled out. But Hayden got him in there and got him all calmed down. And after first, I told him, oh, Hayden, listen. And she wanted to walk around and stop Hayden. I was going to tell him, wow, you did a very good job to that. I couldn't do it. You're so thinking, he must be able to stop picking up the line. He's just all the things he said. It's, it. it's not just child psychology. It's looking ahead and it's like, uh, tomorrow, I'll be 75, and Hayden will be, where the 11 years are now, you know, 8, 9, 10, how old is Hayden? 9, could be 20. Okay, so I don't know the 20-year Hayden. I hope she's better than the 9-year-old Hayden, but I don't know the 20-year-old, so I got to have a relationship with the 9-year-old now, I have a relationship with the 20-year-old, I can't just say, okay, don't mind me, whatever here. I mean, no, that's not how, dreams like that, I can't even know why you're going. But hey, have you guys noticed that? Is she more of uh, more of a? I mean, she seems like that. Okay, so I, I saw that and I really gravitated to it and started bragging. I'm not getting stupid about but saying, but say what I'm about. Good job, you helped me. That is excellent. And she, you could tell she, there were good words to her ears. So I won't push it. I won't But every opportunity that comes along, um, I'll. See if I can advance a little bit. I don't want to retreat. So you never push your bar. Um with kids. Chocolate? I'll share any chocolate. So 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 whether or not you think you can, you're right. So if I think I can win a child or I can win somebody or I can help somebody or I can succeed at this or you know, I tell myself every morning, Jackson, I know you don't think you can. I know you got it. But I guarantee you, if you really try, you can get three push-ups this morning. So, 
You don't get that. Do you? Yeah. you don't get that. Oh, yeah. You women can get three push-ups. So I don't need. What are you talking about, man? So it goes and goes there. You know, I'm telling you, you can get X, and that's what he's telling us over the big person. So our mental attitude, I like this, discern, determines our spiritual altitude. I, in fact, I didn't, I didn't even my notes yet. I wasn't even going to bring Hayden to mind. But I was thinking on Sunday, and it had something to do with Hayden there. But um, how Addie and I used to get five kids ready for Sunday, and getting the kids ready for uh, Sunday really was on Saturday. You don't start on Sunday morning. You start on Saturday. And and having, I think about Bachman kids. Um, I don't think they probably have to win with their young kids because they got all the older kids to keep the younger kids. By the time the first two kids, they learn mom and dad, they know the ropes, so they know kind of like, hey, you know, they get it. They're all going to help the younger. And, and I thought about how difficult it is to get seven kids ready because that and I was I thought about, man, that's a lot of work in the church on Sunday morning. I mean, I'm not playing around. That's a lot of work for seven, for you guys to get up and get seven kids ready. Little kids, some are sick, some don't do good, some who knows, breakfast or not, clothes or not, clean clothes or not, can't find another shoe or not, who knows. Devil shows up. Not, 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 he's a paper boy. No, it's a devil shows up. It really is. All right, so it's got to be tough. How do you do that? How do you tax my dude all those things? How does Bachman, Miss Bachman, and Mr. and Mrs. Bachman do it? How do you guys do it? Middle strength. You tell yourself on Saturday, you tell yourself on Saturday morning, we're going to go to church tomorrow. You don't have to ask yourself. You keep battling, 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 battling. Mentally. How will, you know, Kevin's mom died. Well, he didn't seem bothered. Well, of course he was bothered. His mother died, but Kevin is a strong man mentally. I don't even need to think of um, so, so, Bill Boyd, uh, Monty Watts, uh, those guys are Dan Keats types. They're, they're um, tough. Um, despite anything that uh, was thrown that was built in heaven, my brother lost it in heaven, but they just had that mindset as this demonic had, he got in his right mind. Once he's in his right mind, they, they, you know, things were moving. Okay, I told you before, the mind is, has a free will. Uh, we, with our mind, we make our decisions, we make our choices, we organize our days, et cetera, et cetera. I, I said that the mind has billions, billions of, um, I guess they're called gigabytes, compared to the computer, of people, places. Do you, do you know anybody in Henry? Do you have any name? Tell me what, how the way your dad, kids, your mom. Got a Henry. How old is he? No. Now, you didn't think about Henry yet. But when I say the word Henry, I don't know what Henry. I don't know what Henry. Uh, you know what Henry is, Kev? No, I think the character on two bucks. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I was in my green. Oh, yeah, he's dead. I've got a. Oh, dude! Carry my pass. Oh, yeah. Carry my pass. Oh, dude! 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 So no name, so nobody comes to my no one. They went close to Henry Allen with old Henry one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know anybody named Wilmer? Not your turn. Wilmer? I don't know. I don't either. Wilmer? Well, Kevin, the man that led him to the Lord, this men will get him to, to the Bible, got named Wilmer. So when you I tell you, hey Wilmer, you're like, nothing pulls up on the, in the brain. Um, you say to me, Wilmer, no Wilmer. I think of this kid Wilmer because I've heard it come. But if we say Wilmer to him, if Catherine says, hey, Wilmer calls, you right away. A million things come back to him. Right about if you sat down and said, give me a hundred things about you and Wilmer, not just about Wilmer's character, but about everything you think about Wilmer. Every relationship you have, every conversation you have, he'd be like, I'm just going to thousand, ten thousand. If you ask me if I know anybody named Don, I would say, yeah, first one coming up, Don Burke. And, and so what I'm saying is, going to get, I mean, has anybody here been to the mouth of Colorado? Anybody? Okay, I don't know. Anybody ever been to um, uh, Gettysburg? Anybody? Gettysburg, Mount Rushmore, Grand Canyon, Alamo, Louisville, wherever. Louisville, Florida place. Um, the Ark. Okay, there's some of the places I've been to in my house. 
But when you say a certain thing, I can remember. Okay, uh, George Washington. He had a bunch of memories in the Valley Forge, in his house, and he would say, in my mind, conjures up something. Your mind does the same thing. Whatever billions, billions of gigabytes in our mind, places, jobs we have, skills we have, smells, you know, um, tastes. Um, and then the mind, well, okay, so the mind is still. And so then the mind can become full of concern, care, anxiety, worry, which can turn into um, what I call the, the noia family, paranoia, um, phobias. Why? Because Satan and his army attack our mind. Attack our mind. And if you get the mind, God, God, we'll let you out here just a minute, but these two thoughts. Um, hmm. Okay, let me, let me do this. Um, and this is, you know, I think I wrote down here, it's in my notes, about going to an area that I'm not really well versed in. It would be this area. I know enough to know what I know. But the world and doctors and um, uh, so called science and sometimes uh, and, 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 and medicine, um, psychiatrists especially, have misdiagnosed so many mental and emotional problems as where they come up with. A big pharma then come up with all the drugs that treat these so-called conditions. And some are there, some are not. Uh, there was a girl who came here. They said she had schizophrenia. She diagnosed with schizophrenia. Well, high school kid, girl. Um, a long time ago, 15 years ago, maybe 20. But she came to school for a few days. Um, kind of pinned up, kind of anxious. Isn't there a dead queen? And, and he told me, I hear voices, I hear voices. We sat out on the picnic table that one time, and I said, you know, I do yeah, Because psychiatrists don't know the voice that you hear like weird stuff. I said, oh, no, no. I said, a lot of people think there's many voices in the world. I hear voices all the time, too. I can hear my dad. You know, time I'm getting ready to do a crime, and I don't even say that. I'm getting ready to do something I really you shouldn't do. I heard my dad say, don't do that. I heard my dad say, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, I never heard my dad speak audibly, but I know all I heard that time. I mean, there's been some weird stuff happening, you know, with, with, your, with, your, um, with your mind. But the medical community, because all these troubled minds have this proliferation of them, have it, it just exploded in, in the world and in the country. Um, so doctors feel compelled to treat the patient. They don't have to treat the soul. Well, it's a mental problem, so they can send, uh, send them, uh, refer them to a what they call a mental doctor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist, psychiatrist, or different. But a psychiatrist and they, a therapist, and they determine that these unqualified people that have been taught from textbooks and professors that are both un qualified to treat the human mind because the one that treats the human mind is the creator of that God mind. So instead they say, oh, uh, this, that, and the other thing, take these drugs. And what those drugs do, I think, I believe, is they mask the problem. Instead of addressing the problem, they mask the problem by um, um, drugs that, that control by deadening the signal that the brain sends out. Let's still get this, but to get no one. It's not the brain that needs help, it's the mind or the thinking. I'll say this last one, it's kind of like a slam, but I don't need that way, but I need that, I need that, I don't, I'm not sure. So not, these preachers, they say, not preachers, but these say doctors and the parents and everybody told that I saw someone transgender, whether it's a whistleblower, that's somebody who works inside, it's like, oh, I saw. The FBI who doesn't throw a whistleblower, they go to the authority and blow the whistle on wrongdoing. And the St. Louis Children's Hospital 
has had an increase of 300 and I'll say 73 maybe. 373 percent in 2019 in pre-pubescent girls that would be under 12 will they ovulate. Um, uh, sex change, choose blockers, don't have sex change, cut off stuff, put stuff on. I can't do all that. You know, we cut off stuff. So you double step mass sex change at 14 or 15 years old. Well, where did that come from? Yeah, greed. Well, who was the blow came out? And then a parent came along and said, oh, a parent said, did the AG, the Attorney General of Missouri, so that's who the whistleblower told, did the AG have a right, did the AG have a trans child, did the AG ever, and then he said, here's what the point said, we know what's best for our children. And now that an explosion for stupidity, they started saying, no, you don't. No, you don't, you big, no, you don't, woman blinded by Satan. Blinded by culture. They had four girls from the same class, not grade, the same class come in all one. Can you say, dear pressure? Yeah. Can you say, I'm gawky and 13, my palms sweat, I sweat, my feet are too big, and I look in the mirror, and I got a big pool, no boy will ever like me, so I guess I'll just throw them out. That's what a lot of them are doing. No self esteem. I don't think it's, it's not even self esteem, but it's no self-worth. No belief in yourself. That's what they teach you. That's what they're taught. And then the 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 um, the, um, the hospital that they were all going along with. Okay, well the problem is not these kids this that and everything. thing. It's their mind and their thinking. Whatever you put in the mind, you think of. Um, just that one thought I had. Whoa, this is what I'm going to say. Before I'm going to say something about free. Um, Chemical balance. Oh, they got a chemical balance, so I got to take pack. Oh, I got a chemical balance, so I take it. Oh, I got a chemical balance. I ask them, well, what's the chemical? And I, they don't know it, but I'm, I'm saying, really, what's the chemical? And I don't say it like I'm trying to challenge them. I say, really, what's the chemical? What's the chemical? I've never had one person yet say 4% of calcium and 19% of niacin reduction in the chemical I was missing was uh, what a vitamin D. I've never heard that. It's always, well, we don't know what, it, that's just what it is. It's a chemical balance, a uh, ADD. Uh, how about not ADD? How, when I was a kid, they called it too much sugar. If anybody was ADHD, it was me. Hyper, deficit, attention, uh, uh, deficit, disorder. I didn't want to sit down. I didn't want to slow down. I mean, the time I got out of bed, till the time I fell out of bed, I was moving, 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 moving. That's the job I was. You know, the worst punishment in my life was standing in the corner. Oh my soul. Put your head down on the desk and put your head down. Man, I'd rather be writing sentences. Hi, 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 hi. You shouldn't have seen me in high school and have to go write sentences. So I, I will not, whatever it was, and I put a quote mark. Quote, 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 quote. Got about 100 of them done. Every day shall work. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. No, I don't know if that. But I mean, I, I hate being in the corner. I hate inactivity. I, now I like the activity. You got the bark around you, you know, got the roots, you know, the root beer. I like that. But what if I'd been diagnosed? What if you had, well, problems with the kids, problems with the kids, and you take them all and drug them up? Now, I'm not an expert in this area, so I can't address it. Even, I probably can't even touch the human body. I have a rudimentary bit of knowledge about it. I'm not saying there are not people with chemical imbalance. I'm not saying there are people with mental disorders. I'm not saying that at all. I don't believe, I, I don't believe that. I do believe. I believe there are people with disorders. I don't believe everybody that has a disorder or some kind of something going on, it's, it's, a, it's a demon. No, I've got a demon inside of me. If you're a Christian, you can't have a demon inside of me. Um, uh, you, can be, you can be afflicted, you can be depressed, oppressed, depressed. Uh, but that doesn't even have to win. Now, I didn't, I didn't really introduce this part the way I should have. So I'm going to touch these and I'm going to pray and move on. Um, but we have to call it endocrine. That's the end, isn't it? Yeah. All the time, you just said the endocrine, not endocrine. Mm -hmm. She told me that. Oh, the, the endocrine. Oh, we had it right. 
she was helping me, believe her. I was in my right brain, she was in the left brain. Um, it's an endocrine. It, it's a messenger system for the brain that feeds directly, no, that yeah, goes directly into the circuitory system. So from that you get your adrenal gland, you get melatonin, it helps you with your with sleep, does that help you with sleep? So you got keratonin, serotonin, endorphin. Now, at one time or another, you gotta remember this, and you may have got that. So if you remember when I talked for a long time on on this this subject about um, um empowering your brain like for months. But, but, but I remember I remember teaching on this. So I didn't pull up any notes, I didn't Google any of this, I just try to remember it. But these things I know are all good. They're good things. So if I think bad, then I don't have the doubts this. But then bad people, not bad, but but I'm using the word bad. Bad people get relief from the endocrine system. And it's a messenger of fight or flight. So that flag is just Okay, full flight. Better watch the home. But we don't have a system on the outside of the house that we want to check out. Um, so it, it, it's a magic system. So whether or not you think you can, you're right. If you think you can, you're right. Your spiritual, your mental attitude determines your spiritual attitude. Life is made up of choices. When we choose the right, okay, here's something else I've been doing lately. To me, driving is fun. It is fun to drive and pass up the slow folks and cut people up. No. But I like, I like driving. You know, I like driving. Something's got a little quick to it. And get up and get. Um, but I, to me, I, yellow lights, to me, are like, yellow light means go. You have to, I tell you, I got two pedals. One means go, one means stop. If it's a yellow, means Get through that board turn red. No, it means slow down. No, it means don't slow down here in front of me. I mean, I, and that, you gotta know your lights. I mean, if the light turns red and there's a turn, you got all this traffic, the light doesn't go red. The moment the very second it turns red, this turns green or out there. You can always get through a red light as long as that second goes through. <laughs> that driving tip. Um, so I can't cancel four by the time. No. I, but I have been keep making myself go down. And I, I never wrote them. They're on all the time. These are my hand gestures. We've been traveling. Sometimes. Sometimes. It's never. It's none of No road rage. Now, no one ever road rage on me. I road rage on me. You get what you say. So. Um, but, um, but I've been working on it. Working on it. Working And I'm finding more fun and satisfaction in a challenge, an internal challenge, internal. And when we get there with the thinking of our mind, it's more fun for me to make my mind obey what my spirit tells it to than my mind, my spirit saying, don't drive quite that fast. And my mind telling my body to press the gas. I run my spirit tell my mind. And everybody here can change things in your life. Everybody here can take baby steps, baby steps that lead away from depression, away from some of these noises, and by releasing uh, good thoughts, positive things, uh, laughter is a huge. Uh, Mary Hart does good like medicine, let's say apple do good like medicine, or carrots do good like medicine, or vitamins. Mary Hart do good like a medicine. And when you take your medicine when you're sick, you take your medicine when you're not sick, laughter is some of the best, best medicine. In the endocrine system, and I, I don't know that I'm hitting the 10 on all this, so I don't know how high raise the bar. But I do know it's a messenger system for the brain directly to the circulatory system, which immediately feeds uh, uh, the bloodstream. Um, endorphins, serotonin, ketonin, melatonin, adrenaline, and there's, there's a few other things. So, so it's the thinking. You know, your wife does something wrong, forgive her. Make a joke out of it. Laugh at it. Your husband says something you shouldn't say, forgive him. Just, just recognize you had a hard day. You know, it takes too much chocolate. But, um, no, wrong. Never enough chocolate. You know, I got you grab You need more cookies. You need more cookies. And so, so this thing about the body, soul, and spirit is great tonight. Just now, eight o'clock, we'll get out of here. 
Um, but I'm going to put these things, this Hillary gave me some tremendous stuff, and uh, you could print some stuff off. I'm going to get printouts, I'm going to put them in folders, I'm going to pass them out. Do I have a printout, a bunch of stuff, type them, kind of as much as I can go through my all my notes and take stuff out, but you'll have the notes, mostly that I talk from um, by next week, okay? All right, let's pray for that. Father, we love you. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for the faithful folk. I pray you would bless your life. You would bless those days and, and many others that uh, both Jewel and, and others. Uh, 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 bring us back to church uh, Sunday morning. Help our spirits be right. Help us to be there. We teach us the Lord. God, keep us safe. Until now then, until then, Father, and now and then, Lord, you decide come back to me now Sunday morning. I won't bother us at all. You ready, Lord? Help us to love you. Christ's name. Amen. All right, man.